Lord, why did you have to go to Galilee to meet the disciples after the resurrection? Reverend Dr. Holly Namokyun, United Methodist Church, translator, Mrs. Irene Park, reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. On the way, Jesus told them, tonight all of you will desert me. For the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter declared, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. Matthew 26, verse 31 through 33. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Matthew 28, verse 7 through 10. After the resurrection, the Lord appeared to women and to the disciples who were still staying in Jerusalem. In my opinion, the disciples remained longer because the festival of unleavened bread was still in progress. And it was during that time Jesus appeared to them. As Jesus had said he would be going to Galilee ahead of them, he met the disciples in Galilee eight days after the resurrection. Why did you go to Galilee to meet the disciples? It is quite a distance from Galilee to Jerusalem. You went all the way down there and back to Jerusalem for the ascension. And even the Pentecost all happened at Mark's upper room. What was your intention that you wanted to meet your disciples again in Galilee? Even though Israel was a small land during the Bible time, I could not understand why they needed to travel from Jerusalem through the wilderness for 37 hours on foot wearing sandals. I am sure the road condition was not as good as the modern days. Why did the Lord have to meet them in Galilee? Jesus said, Galilee is where the disciples were first called and it was the very first place of our public ministry for three years. Even though I often mentioned about my death and resurrection, they did not really pay attention. Not only did they not believe, but also none of them understood what it meant. Even though I appeared to them in Jerusalem, their reaction was meager because they had been hiding in fear. In spite of my appearance, they were in despair and all returned to Galilee. Finally, they even went back to their old occupation as fishermen. I wanted to show them the clear promise of resurrection since they were disappointed and in despair. I wanted to remind of what I had said earlier and first let them know the meaning of it. Also, I went there for the residents of Galilee because they were living in the mood as the extension of a funeral. They had put their hope in me in spite of their difficult lives. But when they heard that the rabbi died from crucifixion, they were shocked and in fear. And their once vigorous scene of life became like a house in mourning. Even my own disciples did not believe in my resurrection. They did not believe my promise to return to Galilee. They were shivering from fear. 
Some of them stayed in hiding and some went back to their occupation. But I had to raise them up again and give them the calling at the very place where they had been previously called, in Galilee. I wanted to transform the mood of the village into celebrating the testimony of the resurrection since I was no longer a dead person and became alive as I had promised. I wanted them to be the first ones to witness that I am indeed the Son of God. The depressing mood was the same in other cities, but was there any other city where I walked as extensively as in Galilee? I wanted to communicate the most wonderful news to those who were struggling so hard to find hope in their lowly lives, especially for my disciples. Also, the heart of my disciples was like that of the failed. They followed me for three years and went through all kinds of hardships in the life of evangelism. Can you possibly imagine their sense of loss? In fact, it was not just loss. It was more like despair. Even though it was not a good picture that none of them remembered my promise and were in despair, they were the ones to become the witnesses for my resurrection. And it was no wonder I cherished them, was it not? That is the reason why I wanted to have them hear the joyful news about the resurrection at the very place where they were in despair and disappointment. I desired to share the good news with them who had shared the suffering with me. I remember the Great Commission by Jesus in Matthew 28. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28. 18 through 20. In this place of failure in Galilee, where everyone was under the atmosphere of a funeral, Jesus entrusted his authority to them and dispatched to the world. Just as he fed Elijah at the place of failure and gave a new mission to go up to Mount Horeb. The Lord continue to the residents of Galilee and the disciples who thought I was dead. I show them I am the son of the living God and commissioned the evangelism for the world, which father had entrusted to me on their shoulders. They were in the midst of the deepest disappointment, despair, and just about ready to give up. But I wanted to show them by appearing before them that I am alive and not dead, and I am the Son of God. I wanted to give them the strength to move forward to the world with awe and with joy of witnessing. I cherish my servants. When they were humanly weak and collapsed, I made them stand up to do my work. Without such a shocking witness, would they have the power to move forward to the world? To the disciples who could do nothing but collapse in Galilee, I wanted them to witness my resurrected appearance where they were first called in Galilee. Now I understand that other cities would not have had any meanings. You went to Galilee to help the disciples to stand up again, and you also raised Peter there. When they were in despair, at a loss and in mourning, by letting them meet the resurrected Lord, he made them stand up and move forward to evangelize the world. And the base for their martyrdom was rooted from witnessing the Son of the living God meeting Jesus. You raised them up first in order to feed the flock in the future. I am deeply moved by your love towards us your love toward the flock to give them life through your death 
is shown touchingly as you made the disciples stand up. Lord, help us to meet the Lord who is alive and help us to discard a religious life holding on to dead Jesus in mourning atmosphere. Bless all 1,500 members in our band healing class to meet and behold the resurrected Son of God. In their life of faith is under the mood of a funeral home. Help them to stand up. And by witnessing the Lord of resurrection, may they have the heart of a martyr to move forward to the world. If there are any who cannot stand up, speak to them directly. I died for you and I erected you for the world evangelism. Lord, thank you so much. Now help us to see the Lord in Galilee. May this very place where I have fallen become Galilee, where I can behold you. You can order these three books from Amazon Kindle. 365 Prayers of Blessing for Your Children. Theory and Praxis of Land Work, The Lord's Visitation for 14 Days, My Beloved Bride, Heal as I Reveal. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namok Yun Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of Doctor of Ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowa Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now, she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bum Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. In Hebrew, Menua is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menua as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yunnamo TV, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.